I'm Emma Myers. I'm a screenwriter from New South Wales. I live with a toxic cerebral palsy, which affects my fine motor skills and requires me to use a wheelchair on occasion. I'm one of the creators and co-writers of the TV series Late Comers. Are you OK? Sir, do you want to go in bed it's about sex and disability and being in your 20s and wanting to meet people. As a screenwriter and storyteller, I get to educate people through the medium of entertainment, which means that people don't actually realise that they're learning. I live in the Hunter Valley region of New South Wales with my mum, Jo, and my dad, Dave. <laughs> Cerebral palsy is a condition in which my arms and legs and speech don't work as well as they should. And the strength in my hands and legs fluctuates from day to day. Uh, just making a banana smoothie. It's one of my favourite things to do, because uh, I can. It can be quite difficult. Today, it was really hard getting the maple syrup open. <laughs> For an average person, your brain sends messages throughout your body to try and get your body to do what it's meant to do. But for me, it kind of short circuits from time to time, which can be very annoying, but also quite entertaining, depending on what I'm doing. I don't even think about it until I'm doing something so mundane, and then I realise that my hands aren't working as well as they were the day before or even an hour ago. Tomorrow, I may need to ask someone for help. I'm Emma's driver. I'm her chauffeur. I'm her dresser, cook, bottle washer. I do it all. Mum is one of the most important, if not the most important people in my life. She's my best friend, my advocate for my entire existence. I was in labour for 38 hours with Emma. Then we had an emergency caesarean and she wasn't breathing when she was born. It was lack of oxygen. Um, during birth, and she had suffered the brain damage. Oh, it's the tiniest little dot on her brain, and it makes so much difference. My hands are getting a bit hard. I guess I did notice differences in the way that my parents would approach doing things with me rather than the way they would do things with my brother, but I never felt left out. Hang on, we might have to get you to sit down. Yeah, this is okay. down my okay. My mum was adamant that she was never going to wrap me in cotton wool and she ought me from the world. She's always been a really out there little girl. She's wanted to have a go at absolutely everything from the day dot. I went to mainstream school. I've always loved learning, even when I was being horrendously bullied in high school. High school wasn't the best. You know, she wanted to do advanced English, you know, do Shakespeare and all that sort of thing. And they said, oh, no, you better go to a class where you learn how to count money and work in a little shop. They just put me in the two half basket. My cerebral palsy affects more my left side than it does my right. And so um, things like doing up cuffs 
on my left side and notoriously difficult. Mum and I can't live put up with the situation. I studied a Bachelor of Arts at the University of Newcastle. In the last six months of my degree, I had a storytell internship with the ABC. And this was an internship specifically for people with a disability living in a regional area who wanted to get into media. Through our internship, I met Angus Thompson, and he's one of the co-creators and co-writers and the actor in Lake Helmets. Hey, Stud. How you going? Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. You're so bad. <laughs> Latecomers is based on my and Angus's real life experiences and academic research into disability and how we're represented on screen. Our other co creator, Nina Oyama, is a comedian. I know Angus from uni and I was his carer. I was his friend first <laughs> um, and then I was your carer and then we made a show called The Angus Project on ABC. And Emma I met when I was doing comedy at Newcastle Comedy Night and she covered it as a journalist. We just knew that we wanted to base latecomers in Newcastle. It's a city that feels more like a small town. Hello. Hello. Come in. Have a seat. Vanessa Alexander is a seasoned screenwriter. She's written for shows like Vikings Valhalla and The Great. So tell me what you've been working on. I know you've been working on some new stuff. Yeah. Let's have a chat about it. My role on the writing team was essentially to be a kind of mentor to the team. And I learned so much from the experience and I'm working on my first feature film. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, the and, uh, idea was entirely theirs, but no one on the writing team really had a lot of experience writing television. I've got this idea that this disabled character bought an old rundown colonial homestead. So it's about physical and situational and social isolation. Vanessa is one of the best in the industry and I am so lucky to have her as a friend and mentor. So is it a horror? Yeah, horror psychological thriller. It's kind of like rural Australian gothic horror. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah that's, so. yep. Vanessa yeah. said to me once, producers and creators are looking for writers with a disability to speak to the community. So I'm trying to be that person. Well, I come out here when it's a nice day. It's so just a bit more quiet and the dogs can sit with me and you can kind of hear the birds and everything going around, so it's quite peaceful. Nice to do some writing. When she first wrote something, she said, what do you think? And I did actually question who wrote this, because um, it was really good. <laughs> and she said, well, you know, I did. And I thought, wow. It's been inside all that time, but hasn't been able to be expressed. I'm interested in why people do what they do to each other and what goes on in their own psyche. But as a whole, I like using my writing to educate the public about the realities of living with a disability. It's so weird. I don't normally get along with people my own age. What am I, chopped liver? You're 47 and you only ever text me when you want something. When I first read the scripts for Latecomers, I was really excited. Bingo. So we've got Hannah, who plays Sarah, main lead, number one. And then we've got Angus uh, uh, playing Frank, Patrick playing Elliot, then me, who's playing Brandy. Boom. Girls. Mum! Working on Latecomers, it was definitely the first time I've ever acted with people who have disabilities. I found it really confronting initially. <sighs> 
What are you doing here? I was really shocked at how little I'd had to do with people with cerebral palsy in my life. The first time I met Emma, met her at the famous Meriwether Baths. So what we're looking at is a key location for the series. I hadn't set foot on the beach in over a decade. Because she's so driven and intelligent, and she was just so excited. <laughs> it was bizarre, actually, having a 50-person crew on the beach filming something that had never been done before. There was this moment of pinch being I'm dreaming. I suspect that the thing that was the most important to Emma and Angus is to have a story told that hadn't been told before. And I think they probably rightly feel like that their experience isn't reflected back at them in any of the content that they see. I always talk about struggling to be seen as a woman in the truest sense of the word, because as much as I try to make myself look feminine, I'm subsequently stripped of my gender entirely because of my disability. You are going to have to make the first move. And so I wanted to explore it from that angle. The thing that I learned is that sex and relationships are really hard in the disabled community. And I had actually never thought about that before. But as a human, I understand how much we need that in our lives. And to not talk about that, to not be able to speak about people's sexual needs and emotional needs is really devastating. It's this human desire to, to be loved by someone in a non-platonic way. It's not about sex. At the end of the day, the thing I want is just to be able to find that, that connection with someone that, that accepts me for who and how I am. Is that enough? Yeah. I don't think someone without a disability could have written latecomers as well as Emma, Angus and Nina. <laughs> Oh, no, thank you. I'm driving. <laughs> it was important that it had comedic elements in the show because if it was just a drama, I think it'd be really depressing. Um, and I think that, like... You know, if you can't laugh at the, at the harder, more confronting aspects of life, then, um, then you're just going to end up crying. What I love about Latecomers is it just goes there. It goes there unapologetically. As demonstrated by Frank here, the Hoyer lift is... This way. The Hoyer lift is designed to transfer the client from their wheelchair to their bed with dignity. This is real. This is gritty, this is real. It's awkward, it's uncomfortable, but it's life. And we need to normalise it enough to see more of it to build greater empathy out there. Oh, it's there. Oh, they're at the pool. <laughs> no. Riding like comers, I ended up joining Bumble. Um, and I went on three dates and then decided to just forgo everything because the first guy asked me if I could have sex before our coffees arrived. The second guy um, said that he didn't care that I was in a wheelchair, but he cared that I was a size 12. And then the third, the third guy um, was a recently diagnosed schizophrenic with two pet pipes and, and, um, and refused to blink for the hour that we were together. <laughs> What's that, John? Uh, that's a grope box. Come again? You stand or sit inside here and the person on the outside can put their hand in these slots so they can touch or stroke the person inside. My trauma makes for great entertainment. <laughs> I 
I found this video and it's a great analogy of my day-to-day -day life, essentially. When you're playing a video game and you start as a character and you have that big energy bar across, across the top of the screen and that's your lifeline, an average person will wake up and their energy bar will be completely full. Whether when I wake up, my energy bar's already three quarters empty. In order to kind of function to the fullest of my capability, I have to pretty much power up and have a two hour sleep in the afternoon. I'm an ambulant wheelchair user. About 85% of wheelchair users can actually walk to a certain degree. Obviously, it depends on the individual's condition. I have ataxic cerebral palsy. Now, ataxia is a form of CP where my entire body is floppy. So my legs are pretty much like, um, like noodles that just don't have the strength to hold me up for long periods of time. I have the freedom to walk around my house. I'll rely on my wheelchair to bridge the gap. Flour, we need one and a half cups of flour. There's the one. I love cooking, but it takes twice the amount of time for me to make something as it would for Mum to make it. So I want to create a cookbook for people with dexterity issues. So I have to hold it underneath, because otherwise I'm going to tip whatever I do out the back. This isn't just for people with disabilities, but it's also the elderly who don't have the strength that they used to. Straight in the bowl. It's anyone from people who have arthritis or carpal tunnel or weakness in the hands of any sort. Yep, you can eat that. <laughs> Ingredients don't need adapting. It's how you actually go about doing it. For instance, I can't hold spoonfuls of oil. It did go everywhere because I can't hold it still. But if I'm putting it in there, all of the oil that's being caught and we're just trying to adapt things so Em can just do everything all by herself, but in her own way. <laughs> if your dexterity is challenged, short of having to eat frozen meals for your entire life, you have to learn to cook. We are getting Emma ready to move into a place by herself. It's time for independent living. My parents are now buying in the new apartment complex. Em can buy one apartment and we'll buy another. So we're still closish to her, but um, she can be doing her own thing. So I'll have my own apartment. It'll be a two bedroom apartment, but I'm planning to make one of them a home office. And when the next world virus comes, we can all sing from our balconies. Yes. <laughs> we are close, but sometimes I do say, I don't want to know everything that you do. Hello. Hello. How are you going? Good. Hi. The group of friends I have now are the best friends I've ever had. How was your day? Yeah, good. Mainly my friend Bella. We just hang out and talk about anything and everything. I've had a wardrobe clean out. Yeah, it's nice. I like the flowers on it. Very pretty. <laughs> Disability can be quite isolating. It can be quite daunting and difficult to make connections with people my own age. I'm sure they'll be fine on you because you've got more room to kind of move around. <laughs> well, how would I look in high vis? And it's only recently that I feel that I'm wanted because I found this really great group of people who I can go out with. The following artist sang this 1970s number one hit song. Who sang this song? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
We make a habit of going to the pub on Wednesday night to have dinner, catch up and play trivia. Get in there nice and quick. Oh, wait, your flag, girl. I feel like the average 20-something-year-old. It is true. He gets to have that normality about life. I feel accepted. I feel normal. Recently, my co-creators and I went over to France to see Rizomania, which is a big TV festival that Lake Commons was nominated for. I think that was when it hit me. That nomination will be attached to my name forever, and that in itself is just remarkable. Tell me where you're up to with where you're going at the moment. I received a call yesterday inviting me to join the um, Gender Matters Task Force. Oh, that's fantastic. It'll be really great. You'd be great on Gender Matters. Yeah. I feel like Emma has already become a screenwriter because once you've written your own show, that is what you are, right? So I, I don't think there's really a question whether Emma or Angus are screenwriters. They, they are. And I think the, the challenge for any screenwriter is what where to from there. I'd love to meet someone from BBC Studios or ITV Television, international guest. I really, really, really want to create a international writing career. There's so many more stories to tell. I have two documentaries, so that's kind of my main goal because... I, I am so excited for Emma Meyer's future because she is unstoppable. It's like the horse is out of the gate now. And all I can say is I cannot wait to see what she does next and I hope I could be part of something with her again. I've always wanted to work in the entertainment and media industry and so the fact that I can now call myself a legitimate screenwriter is so... I can't explain it. I never thought I'd end up doing a job that I love.